we're really expanding our vision of who is a victim. Just a few years ago, a 14-year-old runaway being prostituted would have been arrested and treated as an offender. The ease with which you can purchase a child now has changed the issue, but we're not seeing any systemic change. Homelessness, substance abuse, depression, the same risk factors that lead other people into the criminal justice system are actually higher for LGBT youth. Migrant workers are at greater risk for being burglarized. They're at greater risk for being physically assaulted, sexually assaulted. They don't know what their rights are. Cyberbullying has gotten to a point now that kids use it for social status. And then it starts to take a very, very twisted, ugly spin. Technology and globalization really are changing, not just the way we serve victims, but the way people are victimized. Men realize they can make money off selling girls and women. And it's not hard to do. You just need to kind of not have much of a conscience. 70 to 90% of both children and adult women in the commercial sex industry were sexually abused prior to recruitment into trafficking. Recognizing that every individual that comes through our doors has her own unique set of needs and strengths. We try to offer as broad an array of services as possible and not one size fits all. Youth are being exposed to adult levels of crime. The future of predation against youth is online, plain and simple. There's sexting, there's cyberbullying, there's acquaintance child molesters, there's classic pedophiles. Upwards of 80% of youth have already been solicited online. There are so many different exciting resources and tools out there. What are those innovative partnerships that we need to address these enduring and emerging issues? A woman who had been abused for many years was getting ready to leave her husband, and she sent an email to a friend of hers and said, can you help me pack this weekend? Her offender was using spyware. He found out that she was planning to leave him, and he did indeed kill her. The same technology that is challenging us in terms of, of types of crime is also a real opportunity to reach victims in ways that we've never been able to do before. When it comes to technology and domestic violence, we've seen abusers misuse every tool at their disposal for decades. However, there's now a digital trail. So if an offender threatens a victim using social networking, you can prove that the offender did violate the protection order. We work with victims to help them use technology to increase their safety. We want tech-savvy survivors. We've got to ensure that all victims are seen as victims and get the support they need. I had a friend that went into prison for doing something wrong. She wound up being raped inside and contracted HIV and she died. In a lot of detention centers, there are already extremely high rates of rape and sexual assault. For LGBT young people, they're more likely to face disproportionate levels of violence. We deserve to be treated the same like everybody else. We work to build the power of LGBTQ young people for them to be able to impact change. We still have many challenges in reaching every victim immigration, changing demographics, they're happening at an exponential rate. There's one case a migrant worker was being threatened to be beaten, killed. They're living in these awful conditions. There needs to be a concerted effort to reach these immigrant workers and tell them about their rights, tell them this is who they can call for help. The problem with the Latino community is the English barrier and the fear factor. So I start a new way to communicate through phones, text messages, emails, and Hispanic civic meetings. The more we do to help them reduce the risk of long-term problems as a result of criminal victimization, the more likely they're going to be strong, contributing members to our society. The pioneers that fought for victims' rights 
would be the first to say, we now face the challenge of expanding that early vision and including every victim. It's critical not to try and siphon victimization off into its own silo issue, but to see it as interconnected to all these other issues. We need the entire system to be there for victims. Society has to create a safe environment for youth to have a sense of future. This is our next challenge, to make that not just a goal or a dream, but a reality.